Hello everybody, welcome back to Gruesome's Garage. It's been about a month since I made a video. Unfortunately, life gets in the way sometimes, as I, I'm sure you all well know, and it has with me. So, it's been tough to get back to making these videos, plus my camera went on the fritz, and I got um, some advice if you're going to do any kind of videos, especially YouTube videos, don't buy a cheap camera. I got a Canon now, buy the expensive one from the get-go. The first one we had was from Amazon, worked good for a while, and then it went, the screen went out on it, and it just stopped working. So, a little bit of advice there. Now, today's um, little video, we're going to have a review. As you can see here, I got my blast cabinet, and I'm sure some of you have seen it in the background on uh, videos in the past. One thing is when you um, use a blast cabinet, you want to hook up to a shop vac to vacuum away all the dust from the cabinet. Problem with it is, it clogs up the vacuum's uh, filter. So I was at Harbor Freight yesterday, and I picked up this Bauer Dust Cyclone. It was like, um, I think it was like $39. So I'm going to do a quick little review on it, and show you how I'm going to install it in the blast cabinet. A um, couple things about it. Um, it's kind of chintzy. It's, if you notice the plastic here, very thin. If, <laughs> I almost debated going out and buying a uh, cover like at Lowell's from a five gallon pail. They're a little bit, the plastic's a little more rigid and it's cutting the hole in it, but it'll work for what I want it for. Another thing is they only give you one bushing with it. Now, if you look at the instructions, Clearly shows you on the front page here, the hose has a bushing in it. Also, two hose clamps. Doesn't come with that. Doesn't have the bushing for the hose, and it only came with one hose clamp. <clears throat> so, if Harbor Freight's going to cheapen up what they put in the box, they need to take a new picture, in my opinion. Because that is a little ridiculous. So, in order to get this hose to fit on this, which it doesn't. I had to sh dig around my basement and I came up with a plastic bushing I had laying around there. It had a funnel end on it, which I cut off. And that fits right in here. I'll put some silicone on it. Then we'll probably hit the hose with the heat gun and just work it onto there. And either put a zip tie or a hose clamp around this. And then the um, other end of the hose goes on to your cyclone end and your shop vac will go into here. One thing I'm going to do came with this hardware and these um, way too long screws. I don't plan on taking this thing apart. So what I'm going to do is use pop rivets. So, and some fender washers which I have over here. And some 316 fender washers. I ground down the uh, ends of them a little bit so they fit. In here. And we'll just use some 316 pop rivets. They'll be permanently mounted. I'll probably put a small bead, well, not probably, I'm going to put a small bead of silicone just around there. Probably not needed, but I think it's a better idea to do it that way. There's no seal on this, so it's probably going to get a little bit, bit of leakage around there. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, you probably could put some weather stripping down there. I would recommend silicone because you want to take the top off the bat, uh, bucket to empty it. And I just got a Lo and behold, Harbor Freight had five gallon pails because all my five gallon pails I have currently have something in them. So it was under five bucks, so I bought it. Can't believe it. I used to get these at full start at two dollars. So that's where we're at right now. We'll start getting to it. 
First things first, we're going to put a little dab of silicone on this. And i got to find where I put my silicone gun. There it is. And we're at it. Um, since you're uh, hopefully enjoying the video so far, please hit the like and subscribe button and the notification bell. That way when I make more videos, which will be soon, hopefully, you can uh, keep abreast of them and hopefully enjoy them too. I try to keep on top of uh, the people that I subscribe to. Some great content on YouTube. I wanted to get this blast cabinet in a little bit better shape. I've been watching a couple of uh, videos. One of my uh, guys I subscribe to, Chaos Garage, he's been doing some power coating videos. And I'm really seriously thinking about buying a powder coater. I gotta get a little oven, but normally when I do my restorations, I use POR 15 on like suspension parts, bumper brackets. But I'm kind of liking the powder coating. And you can use different colors and stuff. Uh, I've seen some people do car rims with it. It's kind of fascinating. And now that it's kind of available to the homeowner, you know, doing the stuff in his garage. Now notice I'm using silicone and they glue that in because I might at some time later date change that out. That bushing is a little flimsy. Uh, I would I don't want to have to run down. It's it's five miles for me to run to Lowell's and then five miles back with gas being as high as it has been lately. I figured before I ran down there to get something like that, I'm just gonna uh, look around the basement in the shop to see what I had. This is what I had. I'll just Take that and smooth it out a little bit. We're waiting for that to set. So we'll put a little dab of silicone around here. Not real heavy, just enough to seal it. I really don't, don't have a lot of dust in there. Right. I think we hit a snag, folks. I don't think the rubber gun's going to fit in there. Oh, we're going to do a snag here. The rivet gun won't, because of the angle of the cyclone, won't fit in there. We're going to have to use the conventional hardware that came with it. Unfortunately. So we're going to pause the video because i got to gather that up. Okay, we're back again. Uh, I'm going to continue. This is the hardware that came with it, except I'm going to use these little fender washers that I was going to use with the pop rivets and then I was just probably should have checked that before I decided to use the pop rivets but it is what it is we can use these so I thought the fender washers would give it a little more support so I'm going to continue to use them oh. and the hardware they really do put in these things is cheap <laughs> But for something like this, not a big deal. You can see how I'm using those fender washers. I didn't uh, notch them a little bit so they clear where the cyclone actually comes through the top of the bucket lid. I'm using a 
washers they provided on the top here for a little more support. I mean, it's plastic, so it's probably overkill, but can't be too safe. These are metric, 8 millimeter wrench and socket, we'll tighten them. I could have done the pop rivets from the bottom and had the uh, holding end stick it through the top, but I, I wouldn't like the way that looked. I mean, it is just a you know dust collector for the glass cabinet, but they're locked out, they have teeth on them, so it'll bite into the washer. But like I said, I don't think there's really a lot of uh, need for... Probably he's going to get a little minute vibration from the cyclone action, but I think it'll be fine. If I was that worried about him, I'd put Loctite on him. Just remember, you are tightening up plastic, so I want to get crazy with the uh, torque them. It's pretty flexible. But sometimes on plastic I see people over tighten stuff and break it. Especially plastic that's more rigid. When I was an industrial mechanic we used to have these guards on this one series of machines and I used to put them on, the bolts on with basically snug with pink Loctite which is a minimum of uh, Loctite for holding value. That's all it needed. But you'd get guys who'd take those guards off to change a belt or something and they would crank them down and just, I mean they were plastic, they would break. Used to be a pet peeve of mine. All right. No. See, it was on top of the bucket, and of course it doesn't fit very well. <laughs> it's really kind of a piss poor fit. Okay, I got it on there. Oh, no, it popped back off. The lid is actually kind of undersized to the bucket. Probably all the months it was on a cargo ship. Well, I want you to kind of see that because that's something that you should take into consideration before buying this. There, I got it in. Snapped it in. But like I said, you're going to be taking that on and off to empty it. That's something to take into consideration. Uh, sometimes the sweetness of low price is overtaken by the <laughs> long term uh, headache of poor quality. So I don't know how many times that's going to come on and off before it breaks, is my, what I'm saying. Get the camera down a little bit more. I want you to see this. And it is a little wobbly. But like I said, it's just a cyclone. However, I wonder how that's going to be with the weight of the hoses on it. Let's just say you got your cyclone. Uh, not too bad, I guess. You'll have your shop vac going into that one. I 
All right. Um, I think what we're going to do here is I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to work that onto the um, fitting because it's going to take me a little bit because it's got to be stretched over there. I may even have to hit it with the uh, just slightly with the heat gun to soften it up. And I'll show you what it looks like hooked to the blast cabinet. Okay, I've got it all hooked up. Now, on this vinyl hose, I use my heat gun on it very lightly. It's stretched, but I'm going to tell you, I'd be very careful with it. it another second, I would have melted it. It doesn't take much heat. It's a little bit of heat. It will stretch over the fitting up here on the bushing that I put on. And I found another hose clamp laying around down in my basement. I think I bought a bunch of them for like uh, swimming pool hoses. So I was able to do that. Still, there should be two hose clamps in this kit. I mean, it's kind of crazy when they show it on the uh, cover of the brochure. They show it on the box. And it comes with one hose clamp and no bushing for the hose other than the adapter bushing for the shop vac. But this is what it would look like with the shop vac. As you can see, it does have some lean to it here. This top is very flimsy. I almost wonder, um, I was thinking about maybe cutting out a small piece of plywood for reinforcement or something. I got some real thin stuff like Luan down in the basement. I don't know, or I might just go buy a, a regular bucket lid and cut a hole in the top of it and use that. I mean, I, got the, I can use this one as a guide. $39.95, and I will put a link in the description. I guess it's okay. Um, but Harbor Freight's trying to step up its game and supply the do-it-yourselfer. They need to do a little bit better on this, I think. Um, some of these I've seen, and they are more expensive or a lot better quality. But for something like this blast cabinet, if you're doing woodworking and want to take sawdust away from your saw, your sander, I mean... It's a good way to collect that dust without clogging up your shop vac filter. So that's in my review of the Bauer. I'll show you the box. Cyclone dust separator. Oh, forget the box up here. It's <laughs> my review of it. It's okay for what I paid for it, but it could have been a lot better quality, I think. So once again. Um, please hit the like and subscribe button. Keep more content coming your way. Uh, check out some of the other channels that I um, subscribe to. Heavy Pedal Garage, Sometimes Now, Chaos Garage, there's a couple of them. Uh, Uncle Tony's Garage is a great channel to uh, watch if you're on YouTube. All of them have great content on their videos. Take care. Until next time, God bless.